right? So now we're going to be talking about your LLC, right? Your LLC, your business entity. You need to have a registered business. There's no longer we have these businesses as hobbies. Uh, we don't have a, uh, uh, we're not registered with the state. We don't have a, um, we don't have an official name. No, go ahead and register that with the state. Whatever state you're in, go ahead and register it. It's an easy process. You don't need to hire an attorney. You don't need to go on legal Zoom. You can literally go on a Secretary of State website. Look, California for uh, California is sos.ca.gov, right? Or you type in Secretary of State, type your California or state, and then you're good, right? And it'll show you exactly step by step how to set up an LLC, y'all, right? And that's all you need. You need that for your red to register your business. All right, so you're going to be able to do that. And when you register your business, the first thing you need to think about is what type of name you're going to have. You need to think about what type of name you're going to have, right? Because uh, it's very, this is very important. No matter what business or industry you're actually in, you need to be careful because the banks are going to judge you based on your name. They're going to categorize you as high risk or low risk. If they categorize you as high risk, what do you think the banks are going to do? They're going to money. probably going to deny you, right? Yep. Deny you or they're going to get these baby ass limits. But look, no, when you rocking with the cat cat podcast, you rocking with J Talk Trader, we're only doing large limits, y'all. We're only doing large limits, right? So uh, we need to make sure that your business is not seen as high risk. So uh, industries that we want to avoid, we want to say, look, we want to avoid. Um, I'll get to that in a second. You want to avoid trucking. You want to avoid anything like finance, right? You want to avoid real estate, properties. Those are industries where, yes, you can make a lot of money, but it's seen as, okay, you can make a lot of money, you can also lose a lot of money. So the banks are not going to want to give you money based on that, right? So something that's safe that you could always say is uh, business consulting, business consulting, right? And we want to also for our name, we want to make sure that we're very general. For my business, I do my business, uh, right? Yeah, it's I did that on purpose, right? Even though I do credit repair, I do uh, credit funding, um, every credit space, credit anything in credit is seen as high risk. I don't want to see it as high risk when I go to the banks, so mm -hmm. I keep my name as general as possible. Take Flight Solutions. When you hear Take Flight Solutions for the first time, what do you think I do? Shopping you a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Hey, and that's the funny thing. My last name is Pilot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast, fast. I thought that was intentional, low key. I was yeah, like looking back honestly, at it. Honestly. But yeah, yeah, um, but when the banks here, they don't know what they don't know what I do because it's so general solutions. I don't say anything. But if it was take like credit repair, they'll be like, oh yeah, you nah, bro. If I went to if I went to the bank, they will automatically deny me because they don't right. rock credit repair. The major banks don't rock with credit repair, right? right? I remember I had a business named uh, JVP Properties back in 2018. I still got it now, but I went for funding in 2018 with JVP Properties. I had a 780, 770 credit score. You know how much they got me? You know how much they gave me? They gave me a thousand dollars. I was disrespect. Like, disrespectful. I would have took the denial over the thousand. That's low key disrespectful. Right. I was like, bro, <laughs> what? I had fifteen thousand dollar credit card. I had a yeah. ten thousand dollar credit card. I had another twenty thousand dollar credit card, and they still gave me a thousand. They gave you a rack. What you gonna do with a rack? But you can't do nothing with that. <laughs> See, and I did it in, in, in real estate. Oh what man, for real estate for a thousand dollars. Yeah, properties. Yeah, that's real estate too. That's crazy. So I was like, man, it, it, that's before I knew about how to uh, how to get business credit and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so we want to make sure the name ain't nothing high risk. Exactly. So we're going to stay away from trucking. We're going to stay away from repair and all that. And at the end of the day, too, I think about it, too. I know I know some of y'all be like, OK, you know, this is my business. This is my brand and everything. If you, you can you can do it, but you just got to understand it's pros and cons. You're not going to get funding within that business. And right. sometimes you just got to look at business as. I can't be emotional with it. You feel me? Ooh. So you might have to change the name and you could just, you can, maybe it's a DBA or something. You're new in business as that, if anything. But mm -hmm. as far as when you go into the banks, you know, you got to really understand, don't be emotional with it. But we have some like questions and stuff earlier, I think. Questions. 
Um, somebody said SOSMS.gov in my state. Okay, yeah, all the LLC, if you see .gov, then you're pretty straight. So if you don't see .gov, you're probably getting a finesse. So just uh, remember that. What's the best so, way to raise your credit for Yeah, you? that's what I was reading. What's the best way to raise your credit? I'm, ass I'm assuming they say your personal credit for your business LLC. Is this the bread? Is this the bread? Official Jacob. Oh, that's you? Let me know if you're talking about business credit or you're talking about your personal credit. Okay, um, and then someone said, what about mobile diesel repair? I would stay away from repair, but I mean, you could, you, it's it's really up to you. Kind of like my point, what I said earlier. What, what you what you think on that? Man, I, I actually found that had mobile diesel repair. I would say and diesel sound like trucking to me too. It just sounds like a lot it, going on on there. It, it just sounds like it, man. Um, you and honestly, it, it really comes down with what your story is too, right? And there's one thing we're going to talk about is your NAICS code. Right? Oh yeah. Can and you then, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Some people might yeah, not know that. Exactly. Is. The NAI NAICS code is a code that's going to be coming with uh, that you need to be able to provide to the banks, lenders, and uh, to be able to categorize your business, right? Yeah. So not only are they going to use your name, they're going to use that code to be able to categorize you, see if you're high risk or you're low. Risk. Right. So what y'all what y'all could do is go on N A I C S, I believe it's dot com, right? Where you could actually search different N A N A I C S codes. Okay. And with these codes, you'll be able to determine um whether it's gonna be high risk or not. And I actually have a full spreadsheet of all A risk N A I C S codes, the max codes that's gonna automatically or it's going to trigger an automatic uh, um, denial. So um, tap in with me. Um, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably, let, DM me and I'll, I'll shoot it out, man. I'll, sh I'll, give, I'll give it to you guys. Definitely DM him. Definitely DM him so you can get that. So somebody said, hold on, I missed it. Somebody said, what about a resale LLC? I'm assuming they're talking about buying an LLC. Is that what they're saying? Resale LLC. Resale LLC. Yeah, I'm assuming you're talking about buying a re, uh, buying an LLC as far as maybe history. But um, one thing I would say, just before Julian goes, you can you can do all that, but just be aware of making sure it's in good status. You know, doesn't have any taxes and things like that. So it can be risky. Um, so yeah, just really keep that in mind. I don't know if you know the person you're trying to buy it from. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. But right, you I, touch on that? I bought an aged LLC. A lot of people buy. LLCs that are old already, already aged out. So I bought an LLC 20 years old. It was first formed in 2002. Um, I, bought, I bought it because the banks look at you as more credible, more reliable. They see age behind your LLC. And we're more likely to be able to give you more funding for like a couple of dollars. Um, and I uh, was based out of Colorado. And it was formed by a game name, I think, like Brian Young back in 2002. Um, I bought it from my mentor who I trusted. So I would always do due diligence on the person who actually buy it from. You also want to make sure this LLC is in good standing. Yeah. Um, they don't, the LLC just owe anything, all of that. You know what I'm saying? So definitely do your research. So, I mean, you got a, hold on, you got a 20-year LLC and you, like, look young. So, did you, like, come into the place and, like, be like, oh, I've been had, like, what was your story? To right. Support? 2002, right? You, you 20, 29 years old, so you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look, it was a family, it was a family business um, yeah. in, the, in the industry for a while. And that okay. Was, and I'll, I'll tell you why that, uh, how that has helped me be able to get $15,000. Um, in a little bit, it's the Wells Fargo play. If I don't remember to talk about, it, do not let me leave without sharing the Wells Fargo play. How to right. use my tra my age LLC to be here with fifteen thousand dollars, right? Yes, right. sir. Someone yeah. said, um, like retail. Oh, okay. I think the person was talking about not resell but retail. Okay, I guess that's because you know when we talk about high risk. I think that's what they were oh, talking retail. about. Oh, retail. Oh, yeah, yeah, No, that, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that, that's not going to be. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought they were talking about, like, selling. So they said retail. Okay, yeah, I think, hey, I think that should be. That's not high risk, right? No, nah, I should not. Nope. Okay. Oh, nope. I mean, what, what are you selling? It depends. What are you, what are you selling? Right? Because if it's anything yeah. like um, firearms or oh yeah, weed or stuff like that, there, there it's going to be automatic. 
because there's no NAX code. From what I understand, there's no specific NAX code just for retail. It gets a little bit more detailed. On, they're going to ask, it's going to be categorized on what you're actually selling, right? That's true. So going back to our NAX code, N-A-I-C-S code, you can go on NAICS.com, um, search your industry to see what your NAX code is. That's the code that you're going to be able to give the banker, the lender, when you go to apply for business credit. Okay, and they're gonna use that code and be able to categorize you to see if you're high risk or not, right? So an NAX code, I tell everybody to do, whether you know, because a lot of people don't know if they're high risk or not. Something that's always safe: business consulting. Business right? consulting every time, bro. Every time. Every I don't time. care what you, I don't care what you actually do. You. Might, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you might do real estate. You don't need to tell the banker that you do real estate. Yeah. You just tell them you do business consulting. They like they want to see something boring. They want to see some vanilla. They want to see something that. Okay, look. If I gave you thirty thousand dollars right now, I I can expect that you're not either one. You're not going to use all of it, or two. If you do use it, you're probably going to. I'm probably going to get paid back, right? Yeah. So that's huge. Next thing, I want you to be able to have a business email. No more papuchulo707 at gmail.com, <laughs> right? We're going to Google Workspace. Google Workspace. Google Workspace, you can, be, you can get a professional email address. What I want you to do is either put your first name at businessname.com, right? What's yours? What's yours? Mine is julian at takeflightsolutions.com, Right? And mine is michael at catactus.com. So y'all see two examples, right? So just really structure it the way that he's talking about. He's, he's not capping about all that. Right, and it's real. And you're going to need this whether you're going to be uh, PDing your, per, uh, your business credit or you're going to be using your EIN. It's extremely important, y'all. Yeah. Please do, not skip, uh, please do not be lazy. Look, it's it's $10 a month on Google Workspace. Go ahead and get it, right? All right? So once you're able to get that, um get your business phone number get a business phone number it is not mandatory however it helps out there are some banks that they want to see a difference they want to see that your business phone number is on your personal number you can go to grasshopper.com grasshopper.com is a great website you can get a business phone number for, i believe about like 20 dollars a month mm. right? you use grasshopper I, I I did use Grasshopper. I don't use it anymore. I'm gonna tell you what I do use. Okay. All right. So um, if you're really trying to get fancy with it, if you got a business where you need a CRM, you can actually go to something called um. Do you, you either use Go High Level? Go High Level is a CRM system where they can actually uh, as a digital marketing system where they're gonna actually give you a business phone number, or you can use a system called Connectly. Connect. I use. Oh uh, yeah. Connectly, you can. Uh, have an unlimited amount of business phone numbers. You have to pay forty dollars a month, but with that forty dollars, you're able to do it a whole bunch of a lot of different. You can create funnels. You can create. Um, you can email campaigns. Everything of the sort, right? Yeah. But Freedom Voice, FreedomVoice.com, another great website. Another great website. Evoice is another one. If y'all want to, um, you know, take notes. Somebody said Vumber.com. I'm assuming that's related to uh, the phone stuff. So I appreciate the socks if that's related to that. What was it? Oh, ooh, Vumber.com. Have you heard of them? I ain't never heard of that. Ooh, yeah. That might be something. So, you know, do y'all research, uh, take notes, and make sure you get a phone number. So we got the phone number. We got our email. You know what I'm saying? We're not doing no poppy chulo stuff. Um, our personal credit is right. You feel me? So what, what, what else do we really need? We got the LLC. You know, we got the NASIS code and everything. So we really on the way to getting this uh, business credit. So what, what's next? One more thing, man. Uh, can I forget this? You need to have a business address. You need to have sir. a business address. This yes, is an sir. address where uh, your business is seen placed at, right? Like, I don't care if you have a, a home-based business. You still need to have a business address that's separate from your, per from your personal home. Right, and I'm telling you why you won't get denied if you use your personal home address. However, your part, your business address is going to be on your LLC, on your business entity, which is going to be registered with the state. When it's mm -hmm. registered with the state, that means it's public information. That means anytime anybody wants to know information about you, they can look up your LLC, they can see where you live. 
because you got your home address on your LLC. Yeah. We're not doing that into 2022, y'all. We're going to be seen as credible. We're going to be seen as reliable. We're going to be seen as a real business. So what we need to do is actually come up with a physical address. We don't have a brick and mortar. Because look, brick and mortar is expensive, right? We don't need a brick and mortar. We can actually what they call a virtual office. A virtual, excuse me, virtual address. Virtual address or a virtual office, right? You can use both, right? A place where you can get that is opus.vo. Dot com open vo dot com right okay you you use regis or not i use regis you can also use regis dot com but i'm telling you why you can use opus vo dot com because not only will they give you an address right but they'll also give you a business phone number mm, that's tough two and one right two and one you gotta pay i think a hundred dollars a month right so you, but if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to get a business phone number, which I highly suggest you do, you can go to regus.com, R-E-G-U-S.com, right? And you could actually find a business address, right, that you could actually lease on a monthly basis. And that address is connected to a real app, like a real office building, a real office building. Like, for example... Uh, my business address is 2010 Crow Canyon Place, Suite 100, San Ramon, California, 94583. You look that up, it is an actual business office building, big as fuck, right? So now when you go to the banks and they look up your address, they're going to see an office building. When they see that your, your business is connected to an office building, you're seen as more credible. You're seen as, this is not just a hobby, you're actually doing stuff. Right? So it's it's a better look. It's a better look. Another thing, there's a virtual offices, virtual addresses out there where they might give you um, a P.O. box number, right? Mm -hmm. Or an address that's connected to a mailbox. We don't want those. We don't want those. Because look, you could tell the bank that you have an address and the address is connected to a mailbox. If they Google it, which a lot of times I've seen them do it, they're going to see a mailbox and say, okay, well, how is your business out of mailbox i don't understand right but how do you do business here how do you how do you work yeah. right so that's a a lot of times that's an automatic denial we don't want to deal with that we don't want to deal with that so definitely okay. the business address. i think i saw it uh, yeah there was some uh stuff earlier hold on um so we saw the vumber yes it's amazing virtual address so i said what's up with people with ghost address uh let me the bread said he uh business Okay, yeah. so we're talking about, um, he said, that's what we're talking about today, man. We're talking about how we're going to set up our business to be able to get this funding. So if you got a more specific question about um, how to be able to do that, just let me know. And we're talking about how to build a business credit. Uh, that's going to be another call. That's, that goes more into how we're going to use our EIN to be able to get our business credit. We're gonna have Wait, who are you talking to? I'm confused. Uh, there is... Um, my man, my miss or something? Yeah, he uh, it was a two part question. I asked him. He said, "How do you build your credit to get business?" Oh, uh, that was a while ago. How do you build your credit? And okay, I, okay, okay, okay. I got you. He said business. So, um, okay, someone said, "What's up with people with ghost address?" Ghost address? I've never heard that. Term. I don't even know what that is. Do you know what that is? I've never heard that ghost address. Ghost Address. I thought I thought it was talking about power. I was confused. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Can you elaborate on that? I don't know what that means. Yeah, love you though. But who been watching Power? Drop a one in the chat. You been watching Power? Man. Hey man, Power been crazy. I, but I, someone I, said someone said Opus is a trade line as well, right? I don't use Opus. I don't know. Is it a oh, trade line? I did. You know what? I did hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It There's is trade line on your on your business credit. However, it doesn't report to the um the main business credit. It doesn't report to DMP. Right, it doesn't report to DMB and it doesn't report to experience business. So, um, does it report to Equif Equifax or no? Um, um, no, I can't tell you exactly. It's no, it's I can't remember which one it is, you know, because oh, there's so many business um credit bureaus, but it's not the main ones that's really going to be helping you. I mean, it's cool to have it on there, but oh, okay, so it is a tray line. Okay, yeah. appreciate the sauce, uh, north side. I yeah, didn't know, thank about you, that. thank you. I totally forgot about that. Appreciate it. 
Okay. Um, and that, yeah, the, the person I was talking about, Ghost, if you want to elaborate, because I, I don't know what your question was. But um, yeah, so we got the basic components. We got the business. We got the credit. We got all of that. NAICS. We got, we got the address. We got the phone number. We got yeah. the email. Those are the main pieces that you want to be able to have to set up your business. You also want to make sure you have your EIN, your EIN confirmation letter. You can go on IRS.gov. Yeah. IRS.gov, and it's an easy application process. I hope y'all write this down. I hope y'all writing this down. EIN, uh, IRS.gov, apply for it. EIN, only apply for it during business hours. That's nine to five as an Eastern Standard Time. All right. You can create one in literally 10 minutes. You don't need to pay anybody to do it. Bro, it's don't pay no one. It would be finessing people $300 for the EIN. This bro, I'm for it. I'm bro. For anyone, bro. I mean, you don't know what you don't know, so. Look. That's why y'all in this live. So if you think you got to pay for EIN, you don't have to. And you can you start know. your own business helping people form their EIN if you really want to. I wouldn't recommend you finesse people, but I'm not going to say you can't do it. <laughs> you feel me? So. It is. It is uh, look, it's a million dollar industry. There's so many companies doing it. Yeah. So. Taking advantage of people who, who aren't on this live right now. All right? That's what I'm saying. So, okay, we got the EIN. Another thing, you a lot of banks are going to see an operating agreement. A lot of people don't know about this. If you don't have an operating agreement, you need to go ahead and open one now or go ahead and apply for one. An operating agreement, all it is is a basic statement describing how you're using the funds in your business What are the and what are the responsibilities of all the members within your business. If you're the only member in your business, that means you only have one responsibility, right? So it can be very short. However, banks are going to want to see that. It was originally created for partnerships, right? So in case one member dies, what is the rest of the money? How is the money going to be allocated? Is the business going to be shut down when one member dies? Um, is one person going to get the money? Um, it basically breaks down if one of the members dies. Even if you sole owner, you still need to operate in terms of banks when you go to apply for a bank account. Don't ask me why. It's an annoying rule, but all, about... 60% of the time they ask it, right? And you can get one from eforms.com, E-F-O-R-M.com. What I want you to do is type in your state, uh, to, like California operating agreement. When you type it in, they're going to get a template. On the template, you literally fill out like basic business information. It's easy as hell, y'all. Basic business information, ask for your, um, your name, address, the name of all the owners um, you've contributed to the business, right? Of honest, honest you say zero dollars. It does not matter. You just need to get through, fill out the blanks, get to the end. When you get to the end, they're going to say, hey, order to print it out, right? They're going to form it for you. They're going to say, order to print it out. You need to pay thing like $10 a month, right? But they're going to give you a free trial for the first seven days, right? So here's the play. You want to sign up using, right? Get on the free trial. Once you get on the free trial, go ahead, download that operating agreement. Download it, print it out, right? Once you get it out printed, put it in your files, go ahead and cancel that subscription. Mm. Now, you use them to give to operating agreement, right? Without being charged at $10, $12 per month, right? So now you got a free operating agreement. Now you have all the documents that you need be able to go to the banks to be able to get a hundred thousand dollars in business credit you got your llc op, uh, your llc articles of organization right you got that from your secretary of state you got your ein uh, confirmation you got that from irs right you got your operating agreement you got that from eforms.com right you got and also you set up your llc properly the way that uh me and michael are how to do it now you locked you locked and loaded baby you locked and loaded Right? Oh, and also you got your personal credit rate. Right? Yes, sir. Personal credit. 